G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, look through the week um, we actually got a little bit of frost and um, the days have been good like mid 20s, low to mid 20s and um, a couple of evenings we had 4 degrees and I, I had 3.2 or something here and on the sleeper garden beds out the back of the house there um, we had a frost on there, it was easy to see so the whole paddock will sort of die off a little bit now but um, look it's, it's, it's nice to have a bit of a cold spell we had the fire on in the pool room the other night cooking dinner on the fire and, and I no, just kicking back with it a little bit the, um, just enjoying it while we can and it's hot in Bundaberg an awful lot through summer so when it gets a bit cool it's actually nice to um, enjoy it, it, it you know, take it on board a little bit so um, today is Monday and Look, it's probably, I'll just check the time, I've got no clue. Okay, it's, it's 2.52, and so it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I couldn't do the stew earlier today, as there was rain on the roof. And it was just showers, just, just little light showers, um, nothing running off, there's a little puddle out in front of the shed there on the, on the rubber matting that I have there, but um, nothing in it really, so, the sun's come out now, there's still a lot of cloud around outside, but um, yeah, it's just, it's back to being a bit humid now, the sun's come out, but look, that's okay, yeah, we don't mind. Um, had a really busy week. <laughs> Last Monday I got the caravan, um, the gas certificate done on the caravan, and um, the caravan went home. We did all the rego papers and all that, so the caravan's gone, never to return. <laughs> And that, that's a good thing, yeah. We've had it for nine years, so we were, we were happy to sell it. Um, second month, 2012, we bought it. So um, all the insurance were, everything was done, and, and we, yeah, Brendan took delivery of it on Friday. So that's done. Then I got to work on Tuesday, and my daughter rang and said, Oh, Dad, I've got water coming out the wall of my shed. And I said, What? <laughs> and, oh, the wall of her house, I'm sorry, not the shed. And, um, she lives in a little brick unit in town and, and you have the bricks and you have a little telltale, a little breather hole there and a little bit of water come out of there so um, so we ended up having to get the plumber in and cut a hole in the bathroom wall and it's right on the corner in two places and get a new piece of pipe put in so one weekend soon now I said look I've, we'll have to come and do the plastering you know, seal it all up for and, and get it looking nice again and um, yeah, but I said, we'll just leave it a week or two and make sure the fix is good. Um, where they took this poly out, they've got, they've got some good good tools now, these plumbers. We used to have to um, you know, get the, clean it up with a bit of um, sandpaper, a bit of steel wool, and put the York fitting on with the solder in it, then run the heat gun around it, and you'd see the solder come out, and you knew you had a good joint. Well, because it was such a tight corner, we didn't want to knock bricks out of the wall. Um, we actually had to feed this piece of this polythene looking stuff, but. They've got this poly stuff and they've got a, um, a crimper now and it's got O-rings in it and this, this crimper comes and seals it all off and um, yeah, it look, looks to be a good thing. It's been, um, yesterday Judy was there and I said, make sure you have a feel of that and put a bit of toilet paper around it and just see if it's damp at all because we, we don't want to seal it up and um, seal it up and have a leak. So she did that and she run a bit of toilet paper around it, didn't, no dampness at all. So we're pretty well right to go and do that next weekend, I suppose. Um, I went and helped my friend Ashley yesterday again and I took my friend Robbie over. Um, Robbie's setting up a museum north of Bundaberg and he bought a lot of stuff. Um, there were some beautiful things there, you know, old Dawn post vice and, and the best nick one I've ever seen. But, um, I ended up with a little Howard Terrier Rotary hoe and a drill press. That, that's all I wanted. I've, I've got a shed full of shit now. I don't need any more. And um, so Robbie got a heap of stuff and, and yeah look it was good, um, it's going to be good at home. Um, for the old TEA 20 here, um, I've always had a two foreign mile board plough tucked away up at my friend Robbie's place and because they were coming in Sunday to, to come and help with this sh cleaning the shed and buying some of the gear that the family didn't want, um, yeah Robbie said I can drop your plough in if you want and I said oh beauty because I've been talking about getting it because it's about the same patina as this old girl, the TEA, so um, uh, yeah, so when I got the TEA done, and um, 
I'm going to put the plough on the back and look, it'll just look nice, I reckon. It'll be a nice rig. So, so I, I was going to buy a pressure cleaner this week, but just got that busy. And um, Wednesday, my friend Chris, he said, um, come down. You'll notice last week I had the trailer on, but I was getting ready to head down to Chris's and he's had the shift house. So he gave me a couple of old carry alls and a, a seven tine tool bar and a post hole. Put me a post hole digger with a bug of gearbox. And, um, so I've, I've taken that off his hand. Um, my friend Paul, um, he was out here this morning helping me with the 135 bonnet. Um, he's been looking for a little carry all for his TE20, so I gave him one. So I'm down to one carry all, so that's good. Um, I got them for nothing, so I just handed them on for nothing. And, and um, yeah, he can, someone else can get a benefit out of it all the better. So, um, but I put a heap of work in this last week and weekend into the 135. And on Saturday, I got to, I got the bonnet. That's the bonnet that was there that I've been walking around for years. Um, I got it close enough to paint it. Look, I, I could have kept going with it, but I was, I was talking to Judy about it, and I said, look, I can spend another two or three weeks on this bloody thing, and, and yeah, before it's perfect. And she says, well, what do you want it perfect for? And I said, well, I'm always one to you know, try and do things to the best of your ability. But anyway, I got to a stage where it's pretty good. And um, I said, well, that's it. I'm going to bite the bullet. And if I don't get it painted this weekend, um, it's going to drag on. And so um, I didn't paint the new 135 bonnet, um, just the older one. And look, it's come up OK. It took a lot. I've been all day on it, fitting it and fiddling it and getting the dash in and uh, getting the grill in and the dash wouldn't fit. And I could write a book on these bloody, on these bonnets, I tell you. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just a pain in the ass. But anyway, um, that's got a 14 inch grill on it and with the new bonnet um, that I bought off quality tractor parts, um, I asked for a 14 inch grill and they'd sort of half assembled it to see if it worked. And, and the 14 inch grill is a better fit than the old 13 ones, that's for sure. Um, the old ones were grey and they're even painted silver. So I haven't painted that out there. You'll see on the tractor shortly um, when we go for a walk that um, the paint quality on that grill is pretty good. Um, some of the holes wouldn't line up. To get the headlights on, I had to get a shifter in and bend the brackets to get the screws to go in straight. Um, I had a problem with that. Um, some of the holes at the top, I've left a bolt out on one side, I just cannot get it in. And can't get it in and have the panels straight. <laughs> it's just, I can't get a drill in, so I'll up yet. <laughs> Bloody bastard thing. <laughs> and so, um, so it's okay, Look, and the tractor looks nice, so um, this next coming week I hope to stay back in the shed. I, in an afternoon I've been coming up the shed and you know, I'm cutting the ends off the arms and welding them on and things like that, but I've just been for a quick walk up that end to show you and perhaps next weekend I'll get to paint the arms and finish the linkage and once I do that I've really just got to wire the headlights and adjust the brakes correctly and Look, it'll be finished. We can walk away and, and do something else and drop back into this thing um, full time, I suppose. Um, we're getting very close with this as well. Um, the distributor here I was talking about last week, this is, this is the distributor plate out of the distributor that we picked up off, out of the shed we're helping clean up. But it's had all these nuts welded in the back and things like that. So look, it's no good. Um, so I do have bits and pieces up in my shipping container, so I'll have to build myself a distributor, um, which is no trouble. You know, I've done it plenty of times, so we'll build a new distributor for this. Um, you know, get the best parts and new bearings on the shaft, and find a housing that's got a nice bush, unless we need to make a bush. And um, yeah, we'll just go go like that with it. Um, but at the moment. Um, Billa Wheeler Rally, um, there's a town north of us, well, three and a half hours north of Bundaberg, and it's called Billa Wheeler, and they're having a rally this year. Um, and look, it's always a good one, it's always a cold one, um, the weather's a bit chilly, but they've got a great facility there, and um, so we've committed to going up there. And um, I, was, I told them the other day that I'd probably take the gold tractor, but if I get my 135 sorted out, I'll take it. So. Um, and that's gave me a bit of a boot along um, to get the 135 done. I'm going to take it now. 
it may not be finished by gits here, but look, it's certainly drivable and um, like it's got new motor gearbox steering, everything's new in it. And um, it seems to run nicely, it's nice to drive. My friend Paulie, he, um, he took it for a lap before and yeah, it just feels like a new tractor. So, um, so yeah, we'll probably take the 135 for Billa Wheeler. Um, we'll see how we go, but we're going to go up. Nephew Ray, he's going to meet us up there. And, um, well, they, they live close, and um, I hope Shireen comes and sees us. And, um, yeah, so we might have a bit of a family get-together. Who knows? But um, we'll definitely have a track to get together and make Paulie and Rocket and, um, and all them are going up. I don't know about Maltese or any of them. Um, probably, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go up there and just have a bit of a camp. And... Um, We've booked a powered site and Jude says, oh, it's bloody cold, you know, in the past we've had a motel and I said, don't worry about it, Jude, I said, we've got this new setup in the ute, we'll get a powered site and we can put an electric blanket in the back of the ute and sit back in the electric blanket and have a nice snooze. <laughs> I think she reckons I'm dicked in the head, but she doesn't tell me, but you can see it, she reckons it. <laughs> so, well, that's all right, she's probably not the only one. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're committed to going to Billa Wheeler, then um, September, over to King and Roy, we're going to head over there. Um, there's a show, a couple of the club members are going to a show at uh, Mount Larkham this coming weekend, which I don't know what the date will be, but um, yeah, Paul and um, Rocket are going up there and Jonesy and, and a few of the club members would like to go up there. Um, Phil, I think Phil Spann helps run it and um, the engine side of it anyway. So, um, so they're getting all ready to go up there. I've, I've, I gave Rocket some um, wheels, I had some trolley wheels tucked away, so I gave that to him the other day to keep him moving. So, um, so we'll see. I, I don't think I'll go up there, I've got too much to do, but um, I'll wait till I build a wheel for my next one. So, um, but look, we'll, we'll go handheld and I'll take you for a walk. I've got quite a bit to show you today, so um, yeah, hang around and I'll go get for a lap. Okay, this will be a bit of a surprise for you all. <laughs> The old 135 six speed that we did all the videos on and, and did a heap of work on and I didn't do the bonnet because the quality tractor parts bonnet was way off track so anyway I finally um, finally put the time into it and got that is the original bonnet that we couldn't straighten out earlier or, or I just got sick of it after weekend after weekend but I put a lot of work into it and I got it painted on Saturday there's another quality bonnet over there that we haven't put any time into yet really, apart from the quick sand. Um, but yeah, look, she's come up pretty good. Um, that's a 14 inch grill on the front there and my mate Paulie and myself, we buggered around this morning and got that on. I have to wire the lights up yet, they're not done. But we've got all the... We had a couple of wheel bolts missing, wheel to centre bolts missing, they're all in now and we still have to sort the rear linkage arms out and look that's not going to be a worry, I've, I've, I'm pretty well into that now. Um, getting the dash, I've got to do the dash light, the little light up on the dash has to be done yet. Um, it's not too bad. Um, the guards, as you know, I've had the guards done for a long time and I've got a couple of dry edges down, down here and on the other side. And I started off with my paint a bit too thick and with the paint too thick I thought I'd be able to cover over with a sloppy, you know, with a wet coat, but it didn't quite work. And if you can see, two lumps there. There you go, I think they're in frame there now. Um, when you, I put all brand new bonnet catch hardware in and this clip here, um, I've actually taken it all apart since and I've put points on the end of these pegs here because they, where they'd sheared off, as soon as I pulled the bonnet down they, they poked those two little tits up in the bonnet. So. You can, oh look they're a bit hard to see, there you go, you just see them there in the shine. But anyway that's how it is, um, not my best job ever, um, you can see a couple of little 
runs and um, oh, no, a lot of, couple little dicky spots. I've got a run down here somewhere. I can't see it now. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Gotta be a picky bastard I suppose, hey. Oh there it is there. There's a little bit of a run just in there but you, know, you do have to see, have a look to see it. I haven't cleaned the engine block yet from the fuel leaks. Um, I got all, uh, all that part done, all the wheels done. I had three of those studs missing which I found and put on. You'll notice that um, even though this is a fairly early tractor, I chose to put the later bonnet catches on. I just like them better. And this isn't a show tractor, really. This is just one of my tractors. Yeah, so it's got an alternator on it that it shouldn't have, but I'm happy with that. But yeah, look, it's come up pretty well. I'm fairly pleased. I still have to adjust the brakes and do the arms. Um, just as a just as a little Fergie 135 though, she's coming up all right. Now this is the other, this is a later bonnet. This is the one that we only got in a couple of months back now, two or three months ago. And for being a straight bonnet, this is a lot straighter than the old one. Um, when I was fitting the, fitting the headlights, I fitted the new grill, the 14 inch grill that come with that new bonnet to the 135 here. And I had to get a shifter in and straighten some of the brackets and things like that up, but look, all in all, it wasn't too bad. But when we come for a walk in here, yeah? God, look at the mess I've got. They're toolboxes to go on. I love having a toolbox on my tractor, so right next to my seat on the left-hand guard, so when I'm travelling around, I can pop my wallet and my phone or whatever in. But I've got the centres painted for the trekking tractor, for the 135 trekking tractor. And I've got the front rims for the trekking tractor. They're going to be 750 16s and the centre there done. So I do have to, I have one tyre, this tyre up here. I have that tyre to get onto a rim yet for the trekking tractor, but they're 14 928s, quite a tall tyre. And yeah, look, we'll stop and have a bit of a look at this one. And this is a little pick from the other day. Um, this was in Cyril's shed I bought off him. And it's a little Howard Terrier, walk behind Rotary Ho. Um, yeah, look, it's a nice little thing. It's got no compression hardly at all. So it's just gonna go away for the moment in the projects, um, in the projects place, wherever that is, the whole bloody shed's progress, projects. But, um, yeah, look, it's nice enough. It's got the... You can still see the original logos on places, so... Um, I've got no idea what year it is. But, yeah, look, it was just there. The family wasn't interested in it, so... I gave them a few bob and bore at home, and... I suppose I'll get round to it one day. OK, amongst all the junk here, there's a drill press. And we bought that off old Cyril, the family we were helping out in the shed. We, we put powder this the other day and smoke come out the motor. She was cooked. She's fried. So I bought that off and I'm, I'm going to put a new motor, electric motor on the back. Now, that's the chuck that came with it. That's a beauty old chuck. It's a number three Morse taper actually. And I don't know what size the chuck is. I might be able to have a look. It's a three quarter chuck. 3 quarter 19 mil and it's a CF brand so the the drills are peerless so it says MT2 and a few things like that but that's just not right um, and it says 1978 so I don't know if that's right or not but look it's hardly ever been used and it still has the wax up here and the wax down here so um, That'll be a good addition, just a little bit heavier than what I have already. Okay, over on the welding bench now, I spent a few afternoons over here, and this is the arm, one of the arms off the 135 six speed. The other one is down there with the new ends welded on it. And this arm originally had a Cat 2 welded onto it by the farmer, so I've done that again and put the Cat 2 
um, pins coming out of the final drive. It's over here. I've got to tidy all this up yet and just give it a bit of a tidy up. The, um, the end over here, I've got to make sure I clean this out for the, um, for the stabiliser. But I've got the quick release ball ends here. So anyway, I'll get into that. Um, that's this week's job. I'm hoping to have that finished, but look, it's pretty well done. It's just, um, it's just a matter of tidying it up, um, sanding it all back, getting a bit of stonely grey on it. And down on the floor in all the junk there, um, we have the levelling box with the 135. So that has to be, there's nothing been done with that. It just got dumped on the floor the other evening. Um, it was actually stuck on the arms. It took me a while to get it off. So, yes, yeah, so I'll have to go through that this week and, yeah, try and get these arms finished. Then next weekend, hopefully, we're all ready to rock and roll. We, hopefully we can finish the 135 off. Well, there you go. There's my little Fergie plough that um, Adam and Robbie dropped off the other morning. It's got a lovely patina to it. Yeah, that old rusty look. And um, it's got the... The important badge sitting up there but yeah I've done a bit of plowing with that just playing around but um, it needs a little bit of work that rear cult is seized in the pivot not on the where the disc is just where it pivots that's a bit seized and there's a couple little rust pits but um, when I get a TE I, I may even go over one corner of the paddock and have a bit of a plow with it but uh, yeah I'd like to clean all that up and when I get a new pressure cleaner, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably getting a pressure cleaner this week. I just got too busy to go and buy one last week. And, um, yeah, I'm going to pressure clean all that back down and tidy it right up. And then that x roll that I used on the front wheels of the TEA20, we're going to cover it with that so it keeps that original patina. Um, look, it's been at Robbie's for ages. It did used to have a little bit of paint on it, but um, I think most of that's gone now. Um, which doesn't matter, like it'll, it'll be a good thing, but it is complete, it's got the little chains on the coulters, um, often the coulters are missing or the chains are missing off the coulters, but I believe everything's here on this one, so yeah, I was, I was keen to get that home, so when I get the TEA done, that's going to go with the TEA, and yeah, I'll just leave it on there and that'll be that, when I take it to shows, it'll have the player with it. Well, there you go. That's the stew for this week. Um, I'm sure many people will be happy to see that 135 finished, um, and probably just as much as I am. The, on the 135 six-speed series, um, there'll probably be a couple of videos coming on board with that. So um, when I put the linkage arms on, uh, I didn't, I'm not set up for filming the welding of the arms, so I haven't filmed that, um, but it's pretty basic. and. I'll paint the arms and put on and adjust the brakes and then um, I'll take her up the front where I'll take all the tractors and have a bit of a walk around and um, that'll be that job finished off. So there'll be a couple more videos coming up in there um, in a little while. Um, the TEA, like I say, I've got to do the distributor. I've got the new wiring harness. I've got the new generator there now. Um, yeah, I've, I've, um, I'm going to concentrate on the 135 first. So, so look, that's it. Thanks for dropping by. Um, I'll try and try and get something happening this next week. I'll hopefully um, I'll be able to show you the arms on the tractor or paint it or, or something. And um, I do have up on the pallet rack and behind me there some guards for this 135 trekking tractor. So um, while I've got everything out, I was wondering whether I should get them out and just blow a bit of red over them. Um, they're not show tractors, these ones. They're just nice tractors, yeah? You know? like, we're just doing up nice tractors. So. Um, yeah, the warts and all, so there's not, um, I know some of my painting could be better, um, but anyway, that's just how it is, um, yeah, I'm not a good painter. But anyway, thanks for dropping by, I'll stop babbling, and have a great week everyone, and we'll catch you next week.